The title of the topic is Using the Network by Accident. We look at the objectives of the topic first of all. After completing this topic, the students will be able to explain what's the experience when the users use the network by accident. The figures and the material in this topic, they have been adapted from Computer Networking First Step by Wendell Odom book. Some of the most common network services hide the network from the end user. We call them accidental network services. We can think of these services as causing the end user to use the network by accident because he does not realize the network is involved in the task he is performing. Let's take an example to understand the concept, the idea behind the accidental services. Let's assume an employee named Fred working at a remote office. He is the master of his own domain. He has a PC, he has a printer, he can do all the activities without much interruption from the house home office. Fred's daily tasks, to perform his normal daily task, Fred opens a document using a word processor, changes some of the text and prints a copy of the text. He then mails the letter to the customer and saves the changes to the letter. This diagram illustrates the working of Fred's normal daily activities, what he performs on his personal PC. You can see step number one. In step number one, he opens up a file. The file will be fetched from the hard disk. Let's say the name of the file is letter.doc. And then in the word processor, he then asks the printer to print the copy. And then after he has done the printing, he will, in, third, in the third step, he says, let's save the file back to the hard disk. Fred's, let's assume that Fred's company expands. As the company expands, Fred cannot keep up with the work. The home office sends a highly skilled person, let's say the name is uh, Wilma, to Fred's uh, office to work with him and help him uh, get all the work done. The Wil Wilma's presence. Wilma brings her fast high-end PC with her to the new office and installs a network. She takes over Fred's old printer and connects it to her own PC. She also copies all the customer letters from Fred's PC over to her PC. This is what we can think of. Wilma has connected Fred's old printer with her own PC and now she, uh, all the files that were earlier residing on Fred's old computer are now residing in the, on the hard disk of Wilma's computer. Wilma's presence, um, Wilma sets everything up including the network so she, she knows how, to, how it works. Fred, however, has no idea why the new girl would mess the things up like this. On the very next day, Fred starts up his, his word processor, grabs a diskit and walks over to Wilma's computer and copies a customer letter onto the disk. He walks back to his desk, updates the letter using his old computer and then walks back to Wilma's computer with the diskit. Then Fred copies the file back onto Wilma's computer, replacing the old file, brings up the word processor on Wilma's computer so that he can print a copy for mailing to the customer. This is how it will look like. This is on the left hand side, you can see that we have Fred's old computer, we have on the right hand side, we have Wilma's super duper computer and to Wilma's computer, a printer is attached. So Fred will go get customer document one, then he copies it on the diskit, brings it back, does some kind of editing and then goes back to Wilma's computer, open up the file and then gets a, takes a print of the updated file. Fred, however, does not know, however, he does not have any idea about the network. What he does is he instead walks back and forth between the computers with the diskets, moving the files manually and requiring comfortable sneakers. That's why we call it sneaker net. It's a sarcastic term. This method is also working, but it was, it's way more time consuming than before the home office sent him help in the form of Wilma. Using the network, Fred could have done the same job in a simpler and more efficient way if he had used the network. He doesn't even need to know it's working. If Fred had, uh, had, if Fred had just looked on his C drive in the folder called customers, he would have seen all the same files he is used to working with. These files are on Wilma's PC, which we call a file server, but that's hidden from Fred. 
Also, when he clicks on the printer icon from his own word processor, he can see a printer called the same old printer, the same old printer which was uh, which was attached to his PC before Wilma's presence. If he prints to that printer, it will print on his same old printer, even though it's connected to Wilma's PC, which is set up as a printer server. This is how. Fred could have done the job. If Fred had used the new network, he could open up the same word processor window, fetched the letter dot doc from Wilma's hard disk, and on his own computer, he could send the command to print letter doc to the printer which is attached to Wilma's computer, and then press the click button to save, do some kind of editing, and save the same copy, same letter dot doc back on Wilma's PC. So Wilma's computer are, is providing us with some couple of services. The first service is the file services and then the printer services. File services. File services include the process by which one computer, typically called a file server, keeps files on its disk drive and allows other computers to read and write to the files by using the network. Print services, the process by which a computer allows other computers to print files on a printer that is physically attached to the computer. Print server refers to the computer that provides printing services. The users do not actually need one printer on each desk. They simply share the printer located in a central area. Also, they probably want to use the same files as some of their co-workers. For Fred, to do his job, he really didn't need to know that the network existed. So in today's, uh, in this topic, we have covered that uh, how Fred was using those services which are actually hidden from him. This concludes this topic.